of God. It's a great joy to be together, uh, especially on this weekend. You all are brave souls that you have picked a day to come in with the streets, some of them being inaccessible to come into the house of God. But I just want to give you a big God bless you. Give yourself a big God bless you for being 
here in the house of God. We want to thank you all for being here today as uh, we are in the 12th week after Pentecost. It is uh, Saturday, August 14th. Uh, today is uh, also a day that we are grateful for all that God has blessed us even as we come to the halfway mark of uh, the month of August and God has been good to us. I want to thank our worship team uh, for the great invitation. We gather here because of the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names. Thank you to Anna, to Diane, and Chloe, John, and Mark, and Cheryl. Uh, shall we give our worship team and also <clears throat> our tech team of Paul and uh, Greg and JJ for the gifts and for our ushers who are out there in the narthex. I see Bob and Sandy who have been gracious to give us guidance and direction. Uh, this week's broadcast for the radio is sponsored by uh, Lois Tedford in celebration of her granddaughter Autumn. And the altar flowers are given by Laurie and Rich Woodard. Uh, we thank God for also the joy of the birth of Abel, David, Paul Hartley to Anna and Joey Hartley. And the grandparents are Dave and Selma Finch who usually come on Saturday nights as well as on Sunday. So we want to thank God for the gifts that we receive for the worship time. Each of us has received a bulletin. Most of the announcements are in there. Uh, if you would like to uh, look at those announcements, basically we have a time and talent sheet. If you would like to participate in the life of the church with your gifts, uh, would you please kindly look at that and share it with uh, the church office. There's going to be a lifeline screening on Monday, so I just want to lift that up. And uh, we'll continue to have our worship service on Saturday at 5.30 and Sunday at 9 a.m. So, friends, we are also trying to be sensitive to our needs of the prayer request. So there is a prayer card in your pew uh, because it's brought to the notice of us pastors and the worship committee. As there are some prayer requests that are very sensitive. And Pastor Deborah has got a card. Do you want to say something about it, Pastor Deborah? Uh, if you have any prayer requests, please fill out this form and then you can lift it up and Usher will bring it to me so that we can pray together. If you want to make it confidential, you can mark so that I won't release only for your permission. I can lift up the prayers together. Thank you.
I'm very admiring how all the singers and musicians play and sing with it, wearing the mask. Thank you for their hard work because, yeah, we want to praise God even though this mask can be a kind of a challenge for us, but our heart, there is no any challenge to praise God. Amen. Uh, all new visitors, truly welcome to come to and having worship service here together. And also, we have uh, Stephen Ministers to support you as a vehicle for God's healing, comfort, or restoration. So if you need any part of your side, God's side, please let me know. I can connect you with one of the Stephen Ministers. And also, you may hear um, uh, Rex King, he is a former custodian. He passed away last Tuesday uh, in our church building, and he had um, a significant health issue. And then the old um, medical staff came and helped him, but he couldn't breathe at all. But uh, we had a, uh, his service to celebrate his wonderful life. He worked for a long time as a police officer to serve people, community, and God. So Pastor Robert um, led the service. We were there and to praise God's name because God is a comforter and assuring Jesus Christ, resurrection hope is always surrounding him. He is in God's world. But your continued prayers will be greatly appreciated for Rex's family, his wife Sandy, his, his son uh, Jason, and his uh, grandson Sean. Thank you for your prayers. And also uh, George, he was the father-in-law of uh, Teresa's brother, and he passed away in, in India. And, so your prayers, thoughts will be with his family so that they will get strength and also comfort through our connection. And also keep uh, continuing prayers for uh, cancer treatments for Joy, Joyce's daughter and Dory, Diane and Paul's daughter, and also Craig, mm. Our everlasting worker, he never stops working there. And also Steve, and your prayers will be a great God's healing and comfort, strength for them too. And also for strength is to have for John, Matt's son, and also another John, Twyla's husband, and also Nancy and Carl uh, for their ongoing treatment and then your thoughts and also prayers will be a great help for them. And also the earthquake hit Haiti today and resulted in significant damage to homes, roads, and people. Over 200 people lost their precious lives and they really need all things to reconstruct their lives. And so please uh, remind uh, you of uh, the UMCO we have, United Methodist Committee on Relief. We can search that title and then find uh, how you can support for people in there. Uh, I invite you all to have a silent moment while listening to the beautiful song and then collect your heart before God's presence. Try. 
The bread of life. We know that God, we never be thirsty, we never be hungry because of you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a real hope that sustains our lives and beyond any challenges. Lord, be with Rex's family. We know that he is in your eternal world. But it is hard to say goodbye to the loved one. Be, he, be, be with his wife, son, and grandson, all friends, families who are in grief and deep sadness. Let them overcome their difficulties and know that your love make them be strong and also united in Jesus Christ. And also be with George, his family. It's hard to see how they're painful right now. But God, your comfort, your strength always guided them and surrounded them so that they can have enough faith to go overcome these difficulties. And also with the resurrection, of hope, Jesus Christ. Be with our church members and friends, families, Joy, Dory, Craig, Steve. We humbly pray for them who are fighting cancer. Give them the hope, courage, and healing they need each day and as a comfort for those who are undergoing rehab, physical treatment for John, Nancy, Carl, and John. Be with your loving daughters and sons so that their whole body's bones will be restored. Be with people who are in tragedy of the earthquake. God, let them have what they need to rebuild their community and restore their country. Bring us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person 
just as you were there for us. Even though we walk through the darkest valley, we become your vehicle to convey your goodness and mercy. So love is stronger than fear with what Jesus has taught us in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, friends, God is calling us to heal the wounded world. God is calling us to share what we have. God is calling us to bring God's hope, love, and peace. Thank you for all your dedications. Thank you for all your steps to follow Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, be in our head and thought and our thinking so that we can continue to meditate on what you want us to do. God, be in our mouth and speaking so that we can truly share the truth of Jesus Christ revealed in the world. God, be in our heart and action so that this world truly becoming your world, showing how God loves us. Amen. Our scripture for today is recorded in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 6, verses uh, 35, and then verse 41 following. I'm going to read to us uh, from John's Gospel. Uh, chapter 6. This is uh, a theme for today is uh, Jesus, the living bread. The bread came down from heaven. So here are the words of Jesus from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 35 and then 41 to 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever and I and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
you pray with me, please? Oh God, as uh, we are here in your house, we thank you for Jesus Christ who's reminding us once again that he is the bread of life that came down from heaven. His life was poured out for us as an offering so that we could have life eternal. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we hear your voice and your word because you are our Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. I also want to congratulate uh, the announcements that I made about the Rosebud. Uh, Selma and Dave are great grandparents. I think I might have said grandparents, but I stand corrected because it's a great gift to have a baby, uh, Abel, David, Paul, Hartley, and uh, a special blessing to great grandparents, uh, Selma and Dave. So, friends, as we hear the voice of Jesus, uh, one of my favorite modern-day professors, authors, teachers, and pastor, uh, his name is Reverend Dr. Leonard Sweet. And I had the privilege of having him come to our conference, Northern Illinois, when I served as the chair of the evangelism work area of the program council. And uh, he's a distinguished speaker, and he shares many true life experiences and stories. And once uh, he shared that he received this email titled, Rules for Dieting. As our theme is bread and food, I thought it was appropriate. So he's got a few of those, and here they go. If you eat something that no one else sees it, it has no calories. If you drink a diet drink with a candy bar, the calories in the candy bar are canceled out by the diet drink. When you eat with someone else, the calories don't count if you don't eat more than they do. Food used for medicinal purposes never counts, such as hot chocolate, toast, and Sara Lee cheesecake. If you fatten up everyone else around you, you yourself will look thinner. Movie-related foods do not have additional calories because they are part of the entire entertainment package and not part of one's personal fuel that you go to the place and buy for yourself that includes milk duds, buttered popcorn, Hershey's bars, Junior Mints, Red Hearts, and Tootsie Rolls. Cookies, especially cookie pieces, when they crumble, they have no calories because the process of breaking the cookie causes the calories to just automatically drain out. Things licked off knives and spoons have no calories, provided you are in the process of preparing something. Examples, a peanut butter sandwich that you use the knife to put the jelly in, and also the peanut butter, or the ice cream that you have made a sundae, if you lick those, they don't count for the calories. Foods that have the same color have the same number of calories. Examples are spinach and pistachio ice cream, cottage cheese and banana cream pie, mushrooms and white chocolate. And then he goes on to say the tenth one is the kicker. For every burp, subtract 25 calories. For every burp, you subtract 25 calories. Well, one thing for sure... <laughs> And certainly for us, people who live in North America and around the world, the physical nourishment is a much needed and necessary component of our daily lives. Because most Americans eat well. We eat three square meals a day, which is un not very uh, uncommon. Indeed, many eat five or six times a day if coffee breaks, evening snacks, and other times of eating are counted in addition to breakfast and lunch and supper. Even when one drives through a town of any consequences, especially those of us who take road trips during different times of the year, you will see and you can count the number of fast food places and restaurants that are found. Some corners have the, on major thoroughfares, even in a block or two, have such busy, busy places where you can see these fast food joints. 
And if you drive, especially on 47 here in Morris, Illinois, you can name every fast food place, including new ones that have been coming in the past couple of years. And you know your favorite places. Anybody have any favorite places that you go to have your fast food? Come on, folks. Don't tell me you stay hungry. All right, go ahead. Just pop them out. The, okay. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts, there's, a, go, that, there's nothing wrong with going out and eating, friends, but I just want us to get a perspective. And now there is more new ones that have also come on the east side of 47. There's one coming on the northeast corner when you just get off the exit. And, and I don't want to be promoting any brand name, so please pardon me if I'm not mentioning your favorite fast food joints. Because we know that it is very important for us as people to enjoy food. Even if you go to a major supermarket and count the variety of products that are similar, their only discernible difference often is their name. You know, you have all these beverages. We're trying to educate Pastor Deborah about the coming ham and bean supper. So we're calling and telling her that the junior high has always been engaged in having pop and pie. And she's like, what is pop? And I said, this is the sodas that we drink. This is the, the, the brand names that we're going to ask people to bring. So if you look at all the soft drinks that are there, you go to any convenience store, you go to any supermarket, you will have choices galore. At the same time, if you try in the same area to find a religious bookstore, you will really have to struggle finding a Christian bookstore in about 35 to 40 miles radius. Or perhaps, even if we should look for the number of churches, for instance, in Morris alone, how do they compare with the feeding and drinking establishments of restaurants and bars and barbershops in downtown Morris? This is where we pick up the passage from John's Gospel because it takes the preoccupation of the crowd that has been following Jesus and his disciples. It's all about food and drink. It is an occasion to move from eating physical food and drinking physical beverage to the most important aspect of how we nourish our spirits and our souls in this time and in this age. What is the spiritual diet you are feeding your soul? That's the primary question if you look at the overall picture of this conversation that Jesus is having with the people. If you look at the overview of this chapter of John's chapter 6, it starts with the feeding of the 5,000. Remember the little boy with five loaves and two fish right there in that stained glass window. 5,000 people were fed. And then... This large crowd has been following Jesus the next day. And they were looking for him, if you read the previous verses, that they were looking where the boats had gone, where the disciples and Jesus had taken off. And then Jesus and the people are looking for him, and then now he's coming to the point here the next day. He's retelling the story of their faith, the historical component of the retelling of Moses and the manna that came from heaven and the quail as well. And then Jesus says to them in verse 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Hear these words very carefully, dearly beloved. These are the declarations of of God himself. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Apparently the crowd was just waiting and you know following Jesus like great fans of sports teams and things that have movie stars and musical stars. Jesus you know 5,000 people just imagine that for a concert audience. 5,000 people were there following him and he fed them. And they have been the recipient of one of the most astonishing miracles that had happened. In the previous chapter, you see that Jesus had turned water into wine. His disciples were invited along with Mary, his mother, to this wedding. And the wine had run out. And then Jesus performs the miracle. And here, they are looking for more food. The question is, are you really looking for spiritual food in your life? 
Jesus declines. If you look at this passage, there are Jews also who have been following. They heard the previous day what had happened. So they come out in numbers. And then in verse 41, the Jews began to complain about him saying, how can he say, I am the bread that came down from heaven? Isn't he Jesus, the son of Joseph and Mary, whom we know? We know this, this man, but how can he say, I have come down from heaven? And then he retells the whole narration of the law and the prophets. The problem in this crowd is that they think that signs and miracles and wonders are the be-all and end-all of Jesus' ministry. They forgot why God provided signs for their ancestors when they were delivered from Egypt, from their bondage, and how God led them through the wilderness. Are you going through a spiritual wilderness in your life today? There are some of us who are lost, who are lonely. We feel that there is nobody around us. We feel that there is no voice even in a shouting distance. We are just by ourselves, isolated, abandoned in the wilderness of life. Even here, the people are complaining that, you know, then Jesus had to bring to their mind how they, they had been led, their ancestors had been led. And that is a reminder for us, even in this time of this pandemic, what are we really hungry for? Is it the sustenance that comes from God and God's word? And look at how Jesus explains to them. He talks about it is written in the prophets and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. They died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. He's making a case for them to realize that bread is temporary, but the spiritual bread that he is giving and he is personifying is the one that will keep them alive, not only for this earthly journey, but for the journey in the life to come. Donald McClellan, in his work, The Imaginary God, shares a story titled, Dining with God. He says, when Seymour passed away, God greeted him at the pearly gates. Thou be hungry, Seymour, said God. I would eat, Seymour replied. So God opened a can of tuna and reached for a chunk of rye bread, and then they shared it. While eating this humble meal, Seymour glanced down into hell and saw the inhabitants devouring huge steaks, lobsters, pheasants, pastries, and fine wines. Curious, but deeply trusting, Seymour remained quiet. The next day, God again invited Seymour for another meal. Again, it was tuna and rye bread. Once again, looking down, Seymour could see the denizens of hell enjoying caviar, champagne, lamb, truffles, and chocolates. Still, Seymour said nothing. The following day, mealtime arrived again, and God opened another can of tuna. And now Seymour couldn't contain himself no longer. So meekly, he said, God, I am really grateful to be in heaven with you as a reward for the pious, holy, and obedient life I've lived. But here in heaven, all I get to eat is tuna, a piece of dry bread, and in the other place, they eat like emperors and kings. Forgive me, O God, but I just don't understand. God sighed and said, let's be honest, Seymour. For just two people, does it really pay to cook? For just two people, does it really pay to cook? There is, might be only one person in heaven that might end up is what the moral of this story that we are hearing. Do we want to be left? and lost without having the dining and communion with God on a daily basis, dearly beloved. How are you communing with God? Because Jesus says, those who abide in me, when you eat this bread and you drink the cup that we, use, we have the words in the institution, is this bread, when you eat it, you will live. He is the bread of life. So what does mean eating this bread. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. 
and whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give you for, for them for the life of the world is my own self. You know, when, when, we are, when we are invited to abide with Christ in this holy communion, in this holy mystery, the word abide is another word for a dwelling or an abode or to stay or to be with, never to leave, never to be abandoned. Images of home, of staying with, of living with and trusting God no matter what the challenges, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what life might bring us through. This bread of life that you and I have access to will never abandon us. Friends, over the years I have witnessed many scenes of the abiding presence of God lived out in families, in individuals and in persons. In my pastoral ministry, I've seen a husband walking with his wife who's got full Alzheimer's, pushing her down the streets or even through a nursing home because she's in a wheelchair, not knowing a thing. She cannot comprehend it. But he's taking her around, pointing to the things on a warm summer day like today, pushing her faithfully, showing her the beauty of God's creation and nature. Because their love of more than 50 years abides in the hearts because they have tasted the living bread. Another is a devoted wife holding on, standing beside her husband, holding on to his hand, offering a calm, reassuring voice to the one who just moments ago had been thrown into a deep state of consciousness being lost after having suffered a massive stroke with these words, Honey, I will not leave you. Friends, it's also the silent presence of a friend who comes to us in moments just like we had when we had to lay Rex, our custodian of just two days to rest where you just stand with the family and then as the dear one is making their final journey and the family is so devastated, putting our arms around just like Jesus puts his arms around us and says, I will abide with you because you have received the living bread. Friends, in a world of fast food chains, in every street corner, in every drive through windows, every buffet line, every all-you-can-eat salad bars, we are today offered a different kind of bread, the bread of life. It is the food for your heart, which opens our spiritual eyes to see, because everything else is imitation. Everything else is second rate, because Jesus is the living bread, and you and I have access to him. This bread of life is more than can buy a bag of gold. Because we believe in this bread of life as Jesus is inviting us. One day we will walk on the streets of gold in heaven. There's a story about a minister walking along the ocean with his small son. The boy questioned his father about the Sunday sermon that he had heard. Because the boy said, Dad, I cannot understand how Christ can live in us. And we can live in him at the same time. Very poignant question. How, Dad, I cannot understand how Christ can live in us and we can live in him at the same time. Further down the beach, the father noticed an empty bottle with a cork in it. Taking the bottle, he half filled it with seawater, recorked it and flung it back into the ocean. And as they watched the bottle bob up and down, the waves. The father said, son, the sea is in the bottle and the bottle is in the sea. Just like the picture of the life of Christ in me and in you because we live under the lordship of Jesus Christ and he lives in you and in me. What a great way to understand and comprehend that Jesus is the bread of life. He says that those who come to me will never hunger or thirst because I will give to them the, the water of life. Friends, the greatest sign, the greatest miracle isn't a symbol, it is the person of Jesus Christ. He is the one that God has sent as the bread of life. He is the one that heaven sent for you and me in this famished world of spiritual barrenness, of living in a wilderness of spiritual lack, how is it with your soul? Is the bread of life continued to be tasted in your spirit every day, every moment, 
every time that you live and move and have your being. Friends, God's greatest gift to us was to stop sending signs and miracles, five loaves and two fish. And then again, Jesus fed a lot of people again with the feeding of the 4,000. But the greatest gift that you and I can receive is this bread of life. And the ones that are thirsty, Jesus says, come and I will feed you. Friends, I invite you to bow your heads with me for a moment of silence and prayer. This bread of life that we have heard about, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. If that is your desire, if you say, God, I am tired, I am famished, I am exhausted, I have become spiritually dry, I have lost the desire to be fed by you. This evening, once again, friends, I want to invite you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Say, Lord Jesus, I have been a, a Christian, I have been your follower, but there are moments in time of my life when I go through the wilderness where there is parchment, there is dryness. Today I've heard that you are there to fill me up again once more. Fill me, Lord. Let me never be hungry. Let me not just be satisfied with signs and miracles, but help me to feed on you because you are the living bread and your word is life. So help us, O oh God, as a, as a family, as a church, as believers, as Christians, that we will continue to be nourished by your Holy Spirit, led by your voice, and continuously guided to, to live for you, because you said, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. In Jesus' name I pray, and everyone said, Amen. I will invite Anna to come and sing to us about who this bread of life is. His name is Jesus. He's the King of Kings. Anna will sing and bless us today.
<clears throat> we want to thank God for this beautiful song that Jesus is the one that is the bread of life. Thank you, Anna. Shall we give our worship team a big God bless you? They always fill our hearts and lift our spirits. Would you rise as you are able in body and spirit as we receive God's blessings? Now unto him, Jesus Christ, the bread of life, the one who came down from heaven, nourish you, sustain you, and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, strength, nourishment, and spiritual food now and forevermore. Amen. Step by step. Thank you. 